Hello everyone, this is Jimmy and welcome to episode 18 of FTB Interactions. It's pack update day, so I am now on update version 2.0.6 of the mod pack. Um, if you care about the specifics, you can look up what exactly has changed. However, in a general sense, with every mod pack update, we get more quest rewards. I have 16 more of them. Let's see what we did. Apparently we got a drawing of octans. A heart canister. Um, ooh, a rod of the Bifrost. That's actually really nice. That lets us make mana pools more easily. And I wonder what this blueprint is for. All right, let's take a look. So, um, two heart containers. Let's wear those. I think the recipe for this has been changed as well to be... Uh, ah, yes. There's this recipe. Far more accessible at this point. So if we want, we can make more hearts. Although I don't think... Well, let's, let's test if they work. So I made my heart amulet because I needed something in my amulet slot just to hold the runic shielding. It doesn't seem to work. I still only have one heart. The runic shielding still works, but it doesn't give me extra hearts. I presume as a result, I still can't use my uh, dislocator. But we're going to give it a shot anyways. Nope, still can't use it. Oh well. Uh, what else is in here? Besides a lag spike. Storage key. This just is like the... Well, I don't need to keep it on me. It, it locks drawers. Convenient. Um, mechanism laser, huh? What does this do? I know you can use it as part of your fusion reactor. Press L left shift and backslash. Jeez, way to pick two keys that my hands literally cannot reach together. That wasn't good. Whatever, I'm gonna put all this away. Oh, I should have looked at what actually that uh, blueprint was for. So it's one of these. I guess it's one I have one of. I don't know. Um, let's put all this stuff away. For my goal today, I want... Oh, let's put this in our book. I want to make the... Or start making titanium. Because that is a necessary component of matter receivers. Right, which will allow us to teleport around more easily. We just need fine titanium wire. So let's uh, pin that. Very much true to the spirit of Greg Tech, making titanium is a rabbit hole. So to make titanium, you need to make a hot titanium ingot and freeze that in a uh, vacuum freezer. So we have to make a vacuum freezer. I guess I should have pinned that. To make the hot titanium ingot, you need to, in a blast furnace, you need magnesium dust and titanium tetrachloride. Magnesium dust comes from magnesite ore and titanium tetrachloride comes from carbon rutile dust and chlorine. The rutile comes for now from bauxite, although I believe there is uh, rutile ore or titanium ore, one or the other on the moon or somewhere in space. I don't know. This process also produces byproduct magnesium chloride dust, which you can reprocess to get most of your magnesium and chlorine back. I think, uh, let's see exactly how much you get back. So to make this, it takes four buckets of chlorine and one rutile dust and I think two magnesium dust. So you get three quarters of your magnesium back and what one and a half buckets out of four about one third of your chlorine back uh it's not the worst i mean you definitely want to recycle the magnesium you probably I mean, you may as well recycle the uh, chlorine while you're at it right anyways um and the rutile and carbon we already make or rather the chlorine and carbon we already make so uh, let's get started. Actually, I think there's one more thing I overlooked, and that is that this, not this, this step needs a higher temperature than what our coils are capable of doing right now. Right now, our Cooper nickel coils are like 1800 degrees, I think. Cooper nickel coil. Nope, that's a block. Yeah, our 1800. We have to... The downside of having gone to space is that now uh, 
laser creeper dino riders from space start spawning. Um, and they're like all out there, except, you know, most of the time mobs can't reach me here, but uh, the flying ones can. I might have to do something about that at some point. I went and placed a few extra uh, torches. The, in these claim chunks here, I placed a few extra of those, like, don't spawn mob torches. But I actually think what's happening is, because I didn't chunk load those chunks, I'm physically too far away to uh, to load in those peace candles. So they're still spawning mobs out on the shore there. Oh well. Um, we have to, back to what I was saying, we have to improve our coils. So, I think the cantho coil is the next option. This is made in a blast furnace from Cantho ingots, but I believe Cantho also requires our vacuum freezer. So I guess let's start by making our coils. I wonder, can we skip a few coil tiers? We can go to Nichrome. Can we make Nichrome without... Nope, we still need a vacuum freezer. Ah, and... I guess, okay, so we have to go... We have to make Cantho coils before we can make Nichrome ingots. So let's make our cantho coils and our vacuum freezer first. Ah, the rabbit hole grows deeper. The atomic alloy, which is part of our vacuum freezer, needs poly polytetrafluoroethylene to make. So this is... Is there an easy way to do this? There doesn't appear to be. Hydrofluoric acid and chloroform, eh? Alright, well, I guess let's do some chemistry. Apparently anvils can be enchanted as the text says. So uh, I now have an Unbreaking X anvil. Aha! Now to drop this on someone. Anyways, I made this because I want to enchant my... I made a Terra Steel Hammer and I want to enchant it with some better enchants. Namely, I want Fortune 5, but I also want Unbreaking and Efficiency on it. So, which way is cheaper? I suppose I really don't care which way is cheaper. Anyways, there's our good hammer. What I want to do is I want to smash up this granite. I don't actually know if this hammer can smash the granite. Turns out it smashes into cobblestone, eh? Huh. That's not what I wanted. I want to forge ham. Wait. How do I get black granite dust? I want this stuff. Black granite dust. Pulverizing. Regular granite. Not... I see. Let's try that again. No. I guess I have to actually use a pulverizer. That sucks. Um, oh well, I guess it's not that big a deal. I need some black granite dust because I want to make the fluorine chicken, which uh, takes biotite dust, which is a component of black granite dust. Be I need the fluorine as part of chloroform. There's two ways to make it. You can do chlorine and methane, but nope, not of chloroform, of hydrofluoric acid, I lied. Uh, there's two ways to make this, fluorine and hydrogen, or Fluorine and lithium are uh, salt. Sorry, our clay system, I believe, produces lithium, right? One of these is lithium. Pretty sure it's that one. Aha! Um, and we can process the byproduct of making hydrofluoric acid with lithium is that we also get dilithium dust, which is fuel for our warp ship once we get there, our warp capsule warp space capsule thinky majigger all right time to show why i actually made this hammer so say i wanted to process some redstone ore redstone ore can be if i just uh squeeze it i get five pieces of redstone however if i pulverize it i get 12 on you know 12 crushed redstone uh per ore but if i hammer it so this is one stack of redstone ore um this is very much going to overfill my inventory, but that's all right. We'll, we'll count it afterwards. So for what it insta mines it, uh, this process can be automated with you know mechanical users and stuff too to place and break the redstone. But let's see how much we got. Yeah, instead of twelve stacks, we got nine times three, twenty-seven, twenty-six and a half stacks of redstone by using a Fortune five hammer. So if you don't care about the whoopsies. The first byproduct of your pulverizing step, it's better to use a hammer, a fortune hammer, than it is a pulverizer. Now, the reason I'm doing this is I'm after rare earths, so I have to take this, crush it again, 
Um, it doesn't really matter if I use a hammer or a pulverizer. Get impure redstone. Uh, whoopsies, nope, I don't pulverize it. I think I wash it first. Wash it for purified, yeah. And then I pulverize it, which gives has a chance to give me rare earths. In addition, the centrifuge step afterwards will definitely give me rare earths. It's a necessary component in the morphic resonator, which is a part of the fluorine chicken. Someday I'll set up a robust ore processing system. Right now I'm just using a basic ore washing plant that I set up way long ago. Even with accelerating it with a time in a bottle, it is slow. But it's given us 11, 12 pieces already. So let's go process. This step has to be done in a HV or better macerator because I care about the byproduct. So uh, we'll stop processing crushed topaz for a second. And this should hopefully give us some rare earths. Then we just dunk this in liquid starlight. Process that apparently takes forever. 20 seconds at MV, and this is an MV machine. So 20 seconds each. Time to once again commit some animal cruelty by shoving a chicken into fluorine and some other probably pretty nasty things. But the end result will be a chicken that poops out fluorine. Having started this process, um, it produces remarkably little hydrofluoric acid. I didn't realize it only produced 100 millibuckets per two lithium input. I might run out of lithium at this rate, but uh, it's not a big deal, I guess, if I run out of lithium, so be it. I don't need that much hydrofluoric acid either, I think, to make tetrafluoroethylene. Uh, no, I do. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I'll think about it. I came to the conclusion that I'll let this chemical reactor stay here and run as needed to make dilithium dust because we still need this for our rocket ship. However, I'm not going to really bother using the hydrofluoric acid out of it. I set up a dedicated reactor that's fluorine plus hydrogen to make hydrofluoric acid. This will be our hydrofluoric acid source. This, I suppose, will be an incidental hydrofluoric acid source, but uh, it'll be just that, incidental. Anyways. Given that, um, the other thing we needed to make then was chloroform, so that's methane and chlorine. Both of those come from logistics pipes because they're not on our main uh, conduit network. And that makes hydrochloric acid and chloroform. I'm using chloroform here as the what will backstuff the machine. So if the hydrochloric acid tank here fills up, we start voiding it. Oh well. Putting together our hydrofluoric acid Particularly nasty stuff, by the way. You do not want to be in a room with it. I guess a lot of this stuff is particularly nasty stuff. You don't want to be in a room with it. Anyways, putting together hydrofluoric acid and chloroform makes tetrafluoroethylene and dilute hydrochloric acid. I just throw the dilute hydrochloric acid away. I can't be bothered to reprocess it because both hydrogen and chlorine are completely renewable. Then we polymerize our tetrafluoroethylene with oxygen. We can later, if we like, add some of our titanium tetrachloride to make this process more efficient. So the oxygen one per 140, basically per ingot of tetrafluoroethylene, you get an ingot and a half of polytetrafluoroethylene. For if you add titanium tetrachloride to the mix, you get a one to two ratio. But it uses some of your, effectively, your titanium, right? So I don't think I'm going to bother with that, but it is an option. Then with this, all that's left is to harden it into ingots or whatever. Or I guess in this case, I need to use it in liquid form, right? It's used in a handful of assembler recipes. Ooh, a very important assembler recipe. So I guess we need some in liquid form and some in item form, because I believe these plates are useful. Yeah, they're used to craft other very important things. So uh, I'm going to store some of it in a tank. Let's do that. And I'll harden some of it into plates. And with that, our polytetrafluoroethylene, or Teflon if you prefer a simpler name, is done. We can now move it over to our assembler, where, let's see, put it in here, and it starts making the uh, atomic alloy. All right, we are almost at the point where we can make our vacuum freezer. Vacuum freezer, like all Gregtech multi-blocks, is pretty configurable. It's up to you which voltage tier you want it to be at by choosing your input energy input hatches and um, how, 
your item and fluid input outputs. So the quest asks for you to build one that has both fluid and item input output. However, for this purpose, I only need items. So I'm gonna probably omit the fluid components, but you can shift right click it, it shows you the layout. Uh, actually, I think the vacuum freezer has this controller one off the ground. So I'll build it accordingly. Voila, one vacuum freezer. I ended up putting the input and output hatches on because I had them in my inventory, but I don't know if I'm abusing them. So to provide items into here, I'm using an active supplier on infinite mode with the hot ingots. And to extract the items that are done, I just have an extractor module pulling them out of a chest. I don't have any upgrades on this extractor module because the machine will be slower than the extractor. I'm reasonably confident about that anyways. So that one vacuum freezer. Now we just have to make the hot ingots. Let's start with Canthal. Canthal is an alloy of iron, aluminum, and chrome. All right. To make crushing ores with my hammer slightly easier, I found if I just put a mechanical user, hit it with a time in a bottle, and then hold left click for a second, you want your backstop to be something that doesn't get crushed instantly, like the slimy grass. Um, but you can very quickly crush ores this way. I see no reason you couldn't put a second mechanical user to do the crushing step as well. But uh, I just I only had materials to make one mechanical user at the moment. So I should have started this step a long time ago because cooking the canthal into hot canthal is still going to take a fair amount of time. And I need one stack of it, I believe, to make one set of coils. So, uh, yeah. At 80 seconds each at MV, but I put it in my HV blast furnace, it's going to take it, I don't know, like 35 seconds each. So I need to figure out something to do for uh, about half an hour. While my cantho crafts, I figured we can work on the rest of the titanium, basically everything short of the blast furnace. So step one is to put carbon, rutile, and um, chlorine into a chemical reactor. Right now our chlorine production is a little strained. It's being used by all our stuff over there as well. So we're only sometimes getting a little bit of chlorine, but that's all right. That produces carbon monoxide and titanium tetrachloride. I'm just going to throw the carbon monoxide out. I have no interest in it. Next up, we have the shell of a blast furnace. All that's missing are the coils. And there's one thing I want to test, and it might kill me, so I figure let's get it on camera. I read a config option that seemed to suggest that lossless wires, that is wires with zero loss, won't zap you when you place them. So here goes nothing. Oh, didn't get zapped yet. Aha! That does appear to be true. Let me put this somewhere where there's definitely energy flowing so that we can be 100% sure. Yeah. Um, okay, good to know. I guess I just means I don't have to cover my lossless wires going forward. It's uh, not like a big thing because I have a rubber chicken producing all the rubber I could ever dream of, but it saves a processing step, so I'll take it. Anyways, um... This blast furnace then will cook our titanium tetrachloride, right, which comes from the drum gets placed in here. Apparently I've only made one bucket of it so far. I need more, that's not a wrench. I need more chlorine, alas. Oh well, anyways, the products that come out here then are a hot titanium ingot, which I'm filtering to this chest, which doesn't need this basic pipe here, has a uh, provider, or, yeah, provider logistics pipe on it that'll cause a hot ingot to get sucked into there. And then I will use a packager to craft these. Um, let's see, how does this work? Magnesium chloride. Oh, I don't need a package yet. I need a chemical reactor to react this magnesium chloride dust with sodium dust. The chemical reactor here then takes sodium dust, combines it with the output from our blast furnace, which is the, uh, what's it called, magnesium chloride, reacts it, and the fluid that comes out, the fluorine, gets put back into this chemical reactor. There's a reason why this fluid provider, I have it set to only 32 buckets, so that there will always be room in this machine to accept the output from this. Then it produces small piles, so I have to package them, and uh, I guess I need a, I, or a, a chip in my packager, don't I? I need a circuit on two, all right? Get one of those real quick. So that will turn them back into 
magnesium piles and I send the magnesium back into our input bus here. Likewise, this supplier, I have it set to only 32 to make sure there's always room in this input bus to accept the output from this so that the output never gets stuffed, but the uh, input may, you know, the, the input and the processing time will be what determines how long we run this for. Or we can turn our blast furnace off once we have a sufficient amount. All right, let's go check on the status here. Uh, yeah, that's over a stack, so we need to cool them to do so. Well, first of all, grabbing them burns you. Ow, ow. So if I put them away into my ender chest, that's also the wrong color. So let's put them into the right ender pouch. That puts them into our logistics pipe network, which should then send them over to our machine here. Um, it has to come from all the way over there, so it'll take it a little bit. Here it comes, I think. Right? Yeah. Hot ingots are flowing into here. Nice. So uh, now the vacuum freezer will freeze them. This is a very fast process. And then they will be extracted out the output. I guess maybe I do need upgrades on the extraction. Man, extractor modules suck. Alright, just with three action speed and item extraction upgrades, this is now fast enough that the vacuum freezer is the slower of the two things. So um, now I just have to turn those into coils, which is pretty easy. I have to wire mill them and then craft them. I realized I did my math wrong and we actually need two stacks of canthal ingots to make 16 coils. So I have a bit more canthal cooking right now. But in the meantime, why don't we upgrade our chlorine production because it is obvious that our current chlorine is a little bit too slow. Right now we're bottlenecked by this electrolyzer, which processes salt water into chlorine over the course of 36 seconds per bucket. So let's upgrade it to HV. It's a little tricky because this is on a LV line right now, so I have to somehow run HV power over here. Where's my nearest HV line? That's even MV. You know what, I'll just uh, do it wirelessly. So I'll just use a CEF to convert, you know, FE or Forge Energy into EU and transfer the energy wirelessly. Unfortunately, I don't think yeah, one Spectre coil isn't actually enough, so I'll just use two Spectre coils. I could also upgrade our Spectre coil to the Redstone tier. However, this takes these microchips, which uh, I I don't know. I guess it's not that bad. I could just make them. The I would prefer to make them in the assembly or in the assembler, but the assembler recipe seems to only take exactly this one circuit. And this circuit is actually the one I can't make because I don't have like a glue source or a bisphenol source to make these circuit boards. I, I literally just skipped over this because I didn't want to make these circuit boards. So, oh well. Because it's only one amp, uh, two spectra coils provides exactly the same, you know, the right amount of energy. So this causes our electrolyzer to run a lot faster. Our bottleneck here might probably be the centrifuge if I had to guess. I can upgrade this to MV quite easily with just a transformer. Maybe I'll do that. Or maybe I'll just leave it because we're already significantly faster. Um, I guess all I have left to do is to set its output. To send uh, whatever, whatever this stuff is. Sodium hydroxide. I did upgrade our centrifuge and or to MV tier, and now each time I do something, I move our bottleneck elsewhere. Now it appears to be our thermal evaporation plant. I'm trying to make it consume more power. You can just tell it how much power to consume, but it's really weird. Like if I tell it 500, it's like, okay, I'll make 200. If I tell it 200, it's like, okay, I'll do 80. Like, what, what, why don't you use the number I give you? I guess it's dividing it by two and a half for some reason. It's probably just using a different unit. Uh jewels it's using minecraft jewels that's an old unit all right whatever um by turning up the temperature here that just causes our thermal evaporation plant to generate brine at a faster rate now we're up to you know nine millibuckets a tick and counting so uh hopefully once it's heated up our our system will be in perfect harmony finally our canthal is done so we can turn them all into coils. I'm only going to make one set of canthal coils because after canthal is nichrome and nichrome is just better and it doesn't use any better or any harder materials. So I see no reason not to go there next. Anyways, let's put our coil blocks down. And hot. 
blast furnace immediately forms and starts weren't running nice so as soon as one cycle is done um i would accelerate it but it's already drawing four amps i don't know if i produce enough energy to really accelerate this much in fact the answer is no i do not um anyways the hot titanium gets put to here where it gets sucked into there nice and the uh hmm, we need more power well i'll deal with power Actually, let's go deal with power right now. But let's watch our hot titanium ingot. It's probably already done, isn't it? So the titanium, then, it's on its way back to our uh, our storage. And pretty soon, we should see it showing up. In the meanwhile, let's make another couple of diesel generators. I thought about doing this already, but I was like, ah, maybe our power is fine. Stainless steel gears. Aha! Thank you, Past Jimmy, for having thought of this already. Past Jimmy, you're a genius. Alright, let's make four more. And our first few titanium... Aha! Our first one titanium, at least, is done. So let's get it and complete the quest, or at least the task. What more do you want from me? An EV machine hull? Alright, fine. That gives us eight hot titanium ingots. And these four diesel generators should tide us over until we can generate uh, EV power. Just fill them up with fuel. And now when we come over here, our machines should no longer be complaining about lack of energy. Nice, and they're running. So I just want to do a quick check, make sure nothing's stuck. But uh, now everything seems to be good. And our titanium... Uh, just now oh, there we go yep we have three buckets of it waiting to be processed all right so here's titanium automation um, in fact it is even fully automated as it is configured right now i don't even have a way to shut it off which i should probably make so which machine is the best one to shut off to control the process i'll just do the blast furnace and that's done with the machine controller cover so to place it or well, you want to place it on one side of your like the main block so i place it on the top side like that and then by applying a redstone signal to it the machine is paused and it pauses immediately so it like it doesn't lose the queued process or the queued work but you can unpause it at any time we did all that not for ev machine hulls although that will be something we eventually use them for but for matter receivers so matter receivers are the rf tools teleportation network they let you teleport from any matter transmitter to a matter receiver. Two ways to use this teleportation network. Either you can dial transmitters to receivers using a dialing device. So, okay, anyway, I guess that's just the name of this dimension. So I can say dial this transmitter to this receiver. Of course, that doesn't make, oh, whoops, I, I usually put transmitters on the left, receivers on the right. Uh, just to follow the general left to right paradigm. Apparently it stayed dialed. Wait, that's a transmitter. Receiver, here we go. So if you stand in here, it teleports you to the linked receiver. Wow, makes uh, it's a bit more impressive when the receiver isn't two blocks away. So anyways, with all the blocks we need, I think that's a spectra coil for energy, a power buffer to accept that energy, some number of energy conduits, and these things we can go to the moon. The other thing you can do is you can shift right click a charge porter or an advanced charge porter on a matter receiver and it links it so that anytime you can just be like whoosh i'm back um of course teleporting to this isn't very useful because you have the slash home command but uh again will be more useful on the moon so let's get ready to go to the moon so if we head back to our void world we have our rocket just waiting for us are you fueled um, you are fueled, and we just need to select the moon. All right. Um, quick check. We have our oxygen. We have our fuel. We have our teleportation. Where did this come from? I noticed that uh, these the broken Tinker's tools never despawn, so I think the ones I had thrown out a long time ago are still on the ground somewhere. Anyways... Let's go. I'll see you on the moon. How brave am I? Do I want to take accelerate my rocket? I guess it won't let me. 
Maybe that's a good thing. All right, somehow, some way, we made it. I suppose that's not terribly surprising. I would have been shocked if something went wrong. But now that we're here, I can set up our teleportation grid, and then we can go back and forth freely without having to take the rocket. I'll still take the rocket back one more time, just so we have the rocket waiting for us, because, again, we can reuse it. So can't, we can't really launch it anywhere useful from here, but if we bring it back to uh, the Void World, we can do useful things with it there. All set up. So to teleport back to our base, I just dial moon to base and teleport. Alternatively, I could use my charge porter, but that brings us here. To go the other way around, I dial base to moon. Wait, this is backwards again, which means I had it not backwards initially. And then I can step through the beam and teleport to the moon. All right, so I'll ride the rocket back now. Looking at the quest here, I'm trying to figure out why my uh, this is like the go to the moon quest and why it's still blocked. I think it's because the quest book expects you to go to the or like build a space station and go to the space station dimension first. But since I didn't do that, we don't get our rewards quite yet. Oh well. Um, once this lands back here, in fact, I can get off now and just teleport to the moon. Right? This will make it. Oh, I already got off. Well, it's in free fall. I'm in free fall. Um, but I'm just going to teleport back to the moon. I just needed the rocket to be waiting for me there in the void world. Now that um, we have our teleportation set up, though, I can explore the moon. So I'm going to go dig up some of those ore veins. Let's see. I think this tab here tells me what some of them are. Right? Like, uh, I want black quartz and I want star metal are the big two. Um... Yeah, there's not much else here that's terribly valuable, but uh, I need to find some of those veins. I think there are also lunar dungeons, so if I find one of those, I mean, there's a boss around, so I presume he is the boss of the dungeon, but uh, if I find one of those, then we can clear it as well. A scan for chests on the surface reveals there's just some scattered, more or less, throughout uh, at low Y levels, so I'm just going to dig down there and we'll see what's waiting for us, I guess. On my way to the chest, I hit a star metal vein, so uh, I am no fool. I'm going to mine it up because I need star metal. While mining that star metal vein, which was right here, I ran into a quartz vein. So I guess I'm obliged to mine that as well. All mined up for 126 stacks of various ores, and uh, that only used like 10%, is that? I can't quite tell how many marks there are on our oxygen bar. But about 10% of our oxygen. So we have plenty of oxygen. Now to continue working towards those chests. All right, what's in the chest? Uh, well, what's above the chest first, I guess? A spawner for... I can't even tell what that is. Oh well, it's a broken spawner. That was a unimpressive chest. Uh, there are dungeon blocks up there. I guess I should see. Is that like a dungeon above? I'll break the chest too. Ah, just a bunch of mutant steves. They're here causing trouble. Dying. Yeah, these chests seem unimpressive. Uh, I think these are just like added to ravine generation. They're not actually part of the dungeons. Oh well. Flew around for a while and I found this here. Uh, it's pretty abundant on the minimap once you find something, so that was kind of my strategy. I assume this is the entrance to a moon dungeon. Uh, excuse the extreme yellowness, that's my night vision bug thingy. Anyways, I'm not actually going to clear the dungeon, I'm going to cheese the dungeon. So let's zoom in on our map a little bit. Can we? Oh yeah, we can easily tell the extents of the dungeon. Nice. So I'm going to head just about to the dungeon level. However, I'm not going to actually go into it. Just kidding, I am going to go into this dungeon because this is Dew of the Void. I need some Dew of the Void for uh, to make a resonating chicken. I think that's the only thing I need it for, so I'm going to grab, I guess, just one bucket of it. Maybe I'll grab a little bit more. Then now I'm above the dungeon, and if we use our scanner, we can see there are chests below us. So grab yourself a storage scanner uh, and you want to power it with a spectra coil at least from time to time. 
What you can then do is set the range to max, scan, and loot through the storage scanner. You don't necessarily have to loot everything, um, although I think I am going to for now just so I can kind of mark where I've been. And this lets you grab all the loot from chests without having to actually, you know, put yourself in danger and fight the mobs. Ooh, stellar alloy. Anyways, uh, the storage scanner has a range of 20 blocks, so basically it covers about four chunks, um, and then just move it around and keep looting. Sometimes the storage scanner just can't withdraw items for some reason. It's just certain items. I'm not sure why, like the fluxo magnet there, and there's an exchanging gadget here. Um, when that happens, if you want to go get the item manually, double click, and it'll highlight the chest that has the item, and then you can just go go fetch. And that way, you know, you clear a room. Oopsies, I didn't want to toss that. I wanted to pick that up. And then you can jump back up to your hidey hole and continue to stay above the dungeon where you are nice and safe and run into gold ore. Oh, neato. You can even get draconic cores from these dungeons. Ha, huh, I found some titanium ingots in here as well. If I just did this before doing all that titanium stuff, I wouldn't have... You know, had to set up that process just to get a couple ingots. Although, I, I mean, there's no way I can loot enough titanium to sustain my long-term needs. Ooh, what's that? A sky cauldron. Nice. And I'm done here. So if I zoom out my map a little bit, let's see. You can kind of see the pattern I went. I started here and, like, did a zigzag here. Basically, every... I, I was... I use trunk boundaries, so I only do uh, every 32 blocks, I do a scan, and then when I reach the end, you know, I serpentine around. And the end result is I've cleared all the loot from the dungeon, three creative modifiers, two draconic cores, a bunch of interesting stuff, implosion wand, uh, and I basically didn't have to set foot in the dungeon at all. Haha. -ha. Rosa Arcana. Let's see what's in the rare treasures, shall we? Bunch of junk. And another dungeon. I'm just going to loot this one up. Um, I'll probably just jump to the end and show you anything good that I happen to find. Wow. Fortune 11. That's a pickaxe. <laughs> Alright, another dungeon cleared. Uh, quick rundown. Let's see, what did we get in here? There was that, not that pickaxe, but there was a fortune pickaxe. Um, all in Canada. Which, I'm not even sure what it does. But, it's a Batania flower. Um, rubber boots, some armor. Probably not going to use most of the armor. Stellar alloy ingots. I don't know. The second one. Oh, a trinket. Shrinking trinket. So I think wearing this just makes you a half block tall. Yeah, or one block tall. So you can walk into one block spaces. That's really cool. Uh, that will definitely be handy, I think, down the line when we're building things. Um... Maybe I'll upgrade my boots to these uh, boots of the Traveler. Traveler. They both have mending on them already. But these are pretty good Thaumcraft boots. They're also craftable, though, so it's not really particularly exciting loot. In any event, I think uh, I'm done here on the moon for now. So let's... Oh, and uh, Atomic Dismembler. This is just a fancy pickaxe. Also craftable. Not even terribly difficult recipe. But... um. Let's head back to the overworld. To dump our items into storage, I just place my modular storage here and our pipe extracts it all quite quickly at that. All right, in any event, I think that is all the time we have for today. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Tomorrow we'll come back and use all those moon resources and do moon things. Um, probably, well, hold on, there's a quest completed here. Ooh, stabilized mob spawner. That's an exciting one. Anyways, um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll do moon or we'll do things with the moon resources like all that stardust. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.